I should share this. All right. Not should. Have you ever heard that when you should yourself, you put yourself into obligation, which is the dysfunctional polarity spectrum to irresponsibility, which is outside of the functional creative alternatives, which is constraint and freedom, because we cannot be free or have freedom unless we have constraints and boundaries to know the limits on freedom compared to irresponsibility feels very free but it sends us into obligation of paying for that which we've already enjoyed. So the dysfunctional and functional creative spectrums are really a tool to be able to learn to maneuver within. I was just having a conversation right before this, so uh, about that very thing. So I felt like it might benefit someone else to hear as well. Does anyone have anything you would like to share before more people join and we get today's presentation together or going rather? Your audio is still connecting there, LIC. I don't know what's going on there, but we're glad that you're here. Katja, is there anything that you want to add in or say? Um. I guess um, what's there for me is um, I want to make the most of these kind of meetups and I'm of the opinion that um, as much as it's great to to bring information into a conversation I'm also about action so um, I would love to uh, ensure that inside this conversation we can create some things to take out into the world um, maybe within our own families, within our communities and start bringing um, some action to this, <laughs> I love this that. conversation. Awesome. I, apologies for, for cutting in there. Uh, while, you were, while you were saying about action and the fact that this is the Indian Schools Act or the Indian Act is what it's actually called, I just bring in the linguistic reminder of ACT, ION, being how we actually get ourselves in motion, which is why self by my description is C-E-L-L hyphen F for whether we fill ourselves with fear or faith. Chris Weisdorf, how are you doing? It's awesome to see you here. Hi, hey Laura. Um, yeah, I, uh, it's this is not an ideal day for me, but I want to talk about our Edward Bernays and um, you know anything else that kind of relates to manipulating people and manipulating the masses how it ties into narcissism um for yeah I'll, I'll give sort of a little bit of a primer on that and uh you know advise people where they could find out more about it and also tell about that documentary filmmaker who um he, he did a documentary on El edward bernays as well as a number of others yeah Brilliant. We will very much appreciate you doing that. Thank you. I was just responding to Bella's uh, conversation, or Bella's comments there to say that he was having trouble with uh, with his audio. Ella's as well. Oh my goodness. It's Annette, how are you doing? Oh, Bella's back. I'm hoping that other people aren't having issues with their audio. That's so interesting. It mm -hmm. is a very charged mm -hmm. call um the the uh, nature of it hey bella we can hear you now yeah that was weird uh when i tried to <laughs> unmute it said the host had turned that off but i could see everyone else was uh i just tried a quick reset perfect yeah i just when you were got i was i was responding to your uh, message in the chat there to say not sure what that's yeah. about but maybe just connect and try to rejoin so glad we're words. on it that never happens <laughs> it doesn't until it does and then we can't use a definitive such as never or always or things that we have no question about right that's a that that's a definitives anytime we hear ourselves say a definitive it's really good to just just check ourselves to see that we have an always never or all the time kind of idea about something that just reflects a, an ingrained belief system that may or may not be serving us. So I just offer that in case it's useful. Thank you. I think I was just being sarcastic. I work with a lot of technology. So uh, 
troubleshooting this stuff is kind of my job. Well, then, <laughs> no, I will know who to call next time we have issues because I uh, definitely have a few sometimes of my own. And uh, Juan says, had to switch computers. My other one is having issues as well. Yeah. So, very interesting that so many of us are having technological issues when we're having such a charged conversation about something yeah. so significant because literally we are electrical beings that are interfering with the way that the matrix us all and so the matrix is reacting to us imagine if that could be true so well I think that uh, that's kind of my week. I've uh, started, um, I, I work as a sound light and video technician and I've started uh, a shift away from my old life before COVID to like um, healthier events. Uh, so I'm working on some ecstatic uh, dance events and then I just got hit with a massive sickness this week. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but I feel like I got hit by a truck and uh it, it really feels like something's trying to interfere with me uh doing my job at these these events that are just based on openness absolutely absolutely and there's also a vibrational upgrade that you're going through as you step into another position it's like when the rocket ship come takes off it's like you get to the clear sailing part but everybody seems to forget about the launch phase. It's like when we start <laughs> to into set it, taking off, it's like there's the turbulence and we got to break yeah. through and all of that energy. And so on a on an energetic level, oftentimes when we get sick, my first YouTube video actually was on why we get sick. And it was talking about the vibrational upgrade that our body goes through when we step into something new. So congratulations for your reset. How did we get home? You're very welcome. Can we hear you now? I think we can. Hi, Laura. I'm just trying to get the camera. Beautiful. Okay, well, I'm going to get us streaming live over onto Facebook and uh, see how long that lasts. We can see you. Yeah. And then we will kick off with the reason that everyone has joined today, uh, which is for the second Mind Control Programming and Propaganda Summit series of its kind. So hello, 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 everyone that's watching over on YouTube now. Thank you for tuning into the replay or to this one. Uh, Laura J, your host and fabulous co-creators all over this beautiful globe are here to talk about narcissism, not enoughness, and the Indian Residential Schools Act though we are not going to keep it expressly limited to that one act because i believe in patterns as we were kind of speaking into before we went live to you in terms of what shows up and how it, how we do anything is how we do everything so that's one piece that i just want to touch on and so we're bringing in the residential schools act because if we look at patterns which annette is actually going to speak into the mom and baby homes in ireland which is very akin to the residential schools act and what happened here in Canada and the US and it's happened all over in different ways. The Uyghurs in China, for instance, there's so much going on right now that if we look at the root pattern, then we can start to see how to change that as Katya was saying too. So thank you for everyone joining in and um, what I'll do, I don't want it to be a huge PowerPoint uh, type experience, though I do want to um, see where the PowerPoint is that I found. Does, is there anything anybody would like to share before we actually get into get into things? All I can I just wanted to say I can't spend too much time on this call, unfortunately, just because it's a time crunch I said to you in my messages before that, that's that's the only thing other than that um i'm good i just wanted to um according to your schedule just get to it or whatever works for you but i just i don't have a lot of time unfortunately today 
Yeah, no, thank you, Chris. And so actually the last call that we had uh, where Chris had actually come in and what he didn't mention that time that we wanted to make sure that we got into this time is actually a man that has influenced how ideas are marketed. And so what, because due to the time constraints and because I wanna learn of this as well, uh, Chris, if you want to start out by just sharing about Bernays and where you felt that tied into narcissism, not enoughness, and the Indian Residential Schools Act, uh, that would be a great way to start out. Yeah, so specifically with the uh, Residential Schools Act, um, that's that's a harder thing to tie into. It, 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 Bernays was... Uh, he was the first in terms of determining through mass through psychology and through mass psychology. It, it never really had, it just didn't, uh, it wasn't analyzed before. It wasn't looked at in that type of depth. And it was he and Anna Freud who related to Sigmund Freud, who went on this, um, you know, expedition in terms of, you know, academic uh, analysis to find out, how to sell things to the masses. And of course, this is directly related to, you know, stuff in New York. It was all in New York, uh, like Bloomingdale's and Macy's and things like that and Wall Street. You know, they, they fund these businesses, then the businesses have to sell things. So how do you maximize the sales of those things? So he came up with his whole methodology and that methodology is, was, is used by, you know, uh, advertising firms and everyone around the world today, uh, especially uh, politicians now. When politicians want to sell something to the public, they use Edward Bernays' tactics, which all involve, it's, it's relatively simple, a lot of things. But again, there's, there's quite a bit, a bit of analysis that can be done. Well, let me just there's quite a bit of analysis that can be done so and i'm not i just i want to kind of oversimplify it for initial conversation and tell people where they can find more on bernays bernays how do you how, how do you spell the name it's not like bernays sauce it's b-e-r-n-a-y-s I'll, I'll type it in the in the right here um oh sorry i was just there in the chat yeah. Okay, Bernays, Bernays. I pulled up a slide. So, for it, but yeah. yeah, so I put it here. Um, yeah. And he, he basically came up with this methodology, as I said, and the methodology is really heavily based on, on appealing to people's emotions. And what, and what Freud said was not Anna Freud, but Freud was like, everything is becomes very basic with human beings and goes back to, he doesn't, he didn't necessarily mention biological processes, but he, he, but he said to basic fears and sex and, um, and, you know, greed and things like that, like fear, fears of missing out. And there's a lot of that sort of stuff. And if you, a lot of people have commented on, what's going on with respect to COVID? Why do people comply? This, so this is more to do probably with more with more to do with COVID than anything else, rather than something like residential schools, which, you know, is just went on for, for a long time. And, you know, it was, it was mass, mass repression and, you know, what, what happened, what happened to all of those people. So I, you know, looked at Edward Bernays back, I'm trying to remember the year, um, maybe about 15 years ago, because of my favorite documentary filmmaker, Adam Curtis. Um, Adam Curtis is a BBC documentary filmmaker, and he's done a number, all sorts of documentaries, my favorite ever. Uh, and he did one, the most well known is called The Power of Nightmares. He's done all these other ones. Um, one is called Hypernormalization, another one's called The Trap, another one's called all watched over by machines of love and grace that the the power of nightmares and all watched over by machines of love and grace are my favorites but one he did before that in 2002 because power of nightmares is 2004 and the other ones that were after that was in, in 2002 he did the century of the self 
and that was all about Edward Bernays and Anna Freud and mass manipulation. And if, if, you, if you recall, every war in our lifetimes has been marketed according to Bernays' techniques. Every mass ad campaign has been marketed the same way. Everything to do with COVID was marketed the same way. Because then what they try to do is they try to appeal to that base part of your brain to, to kind of um, go, you know, hijack the cortex, like go beyond the cerebral cortex, which is the reasoning part, and go more into the limbic system or into the midbrain, which is really the, the reptilian brain. Uh, and again, I'm going more into this than I probably should, but there, you know, there's a lot of, there are many different neurological processes and there are different parts of the brain, right? That, that in the way that things are processed, things are processed in the brain from back to front. So from the, the occipital lobes and the uh, lobes in the back, which is, you know, really responsible for vision to the frontal lobes, which is responsible for uh, really tying everything together and really what makes us human and our reasoning portion more than anything else is in the front, is in the frontal lobes. And the parietal lobes are the side, it's more to do with like mathematics and language and the um, temporal lobes, uh, they have again, similar things to do with more techni technical things. And um, yeah, that's really simple over, 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 over simplifying things. And then, and then it, it, you go into the midbrain you have the hypothalamus, the pituitary, um, you have the amygdala, that is absolutely critical with respect to, um, it is the fear center of the brain, the amygdala. It looks like a little, a little like crook, a little hook in the middle of the brain. And that is the fear center of the brain. So I, I think that when, you know, the way that, that things have been going on um, over the last, uh, you know, two years, and, and certainly before that, with the Iraq war and terrorism and everything else, they're strumming the amygdala, like, like someone strums a, you know, um, a guitar. So yeah, the amygdala, it, if you can get to that, you're, you are hijacking the rest of the brain. There's also uh, something even more complicated in terms of biological processes and, um, I guess feedback loops, but it's it's to do with um, if you you've heard about fight and flight, and then there's also feed and breed. You probably you definitely have heard of fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Those are those refer to the the different types of nervous system. There's the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. So the sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight. Parasympathetic is the other nervous system that's the feed and breed nervous system so one they're you know one is they're both designed to keep you alive and propagate the species one is there to get you out of danger the other one is what do you do when you're not in danger right so so there are, all of these things that i've just mentioned are things that were analyzed in an earlier time you know i'm talking like 1800s early 1900s and Freud said, you know, well, we can't get rid of these things. We're, we're human animals, you know, we can't get rid of things yet, these things. Yes, we're, we're evolved. But ultimately, we have these, these urges, we have, you know, fight and flight, feed and breed, that sort of stuff. If we can appeal to those urges, we can sell a lot of stuff. That's it. It's that simple. So everything involves, look at, look at COVID, everything involves fear, uncertainty, doubt, anxiety, and confusion. Fusion. I've given over 40 legal presentations. I did a presentation on uh, surviving a financial crisis last night in St. Catharines. So, uh, you know, everything that is being done, and I keep mentioning about fear, uncertainty, doubt, anxiety, and confusion, that they do these things to control people. And they do it so that, especially the fear and the confusion, everything else is sandwiched in between there between those bookends the fear the fear and confusion mm -hmm. so if they can keep you scared and they can keep guessing you will be in a maximum state of of terror and in a manipulative state so if you are scared okay that's one thing but a lot of times when you're trying to scare someone and you're trying to do it again and again um it's a terror technique. This is a narcissist technique. It's a psychopathic technique. It's a sociopathic technique. But when you are, you're trying to continually 
keep someone under your thumb. You can't be predictable. If you are predictable, and that's why psychopaths are probably the most effective because they're completely unpredictable. But um, if, you, if you're predictable, just like in a horror movie, right? They figured out very early on with horror movies that if you keep you know, having the killer with the machete come out of the closet or whatever, you know, it's not going to scare people if people expect it. Mm -hmm. But if you have a cat jump out of there first, then you think, oh, they're safe. And then the guy comes out of the closet and chops someone's head off. You know, it's more effective. And and that's something, you know, Hitchcock called the MacGuffin and there's all sorts of stuff, but movie making, same thing. Whether they looked at Edward Bernays or not, it's the same thing. You know, you are, you know, making a movie, you want to maximize sales, you want to put out a good product. A lot of the stuff is good. You know, you don't want to go to a horror movie and be bored, right? You want to be taken in. You want to be, and the same thing goes for, you know, appealing to the good nature of human beings, appealing to kind of hope and dreams and, you know, the, the best of humanity and, and happy endings because everyone wants a happy ending. You know, they want the good guy to win. They want the guy to get the girl. All of that sort of stuff, really basic stuff going back to to the most basic functions of, of human beings so um yeah uh, i'm sorry there's not much of a tie into residential schools but it's it's definitely to do with covid it's to do with selling wars it's to do with um the absolute mind games the government has been playing and i mean when i mean the government i don't just mean our government government in general what they've been doing they they've been doing it in a way that's never actually worked before um, by going back and forth from one lie to another. And this is, it is cult mentality. It is the cult. Like how, how, do, how do cults operate? How do cults keep their members in check? How do they um, keep critics at check, right? Cults operate the same way, you know, but again, it's more, it's a relatively small crowd, but they still use those Bernays techniques to make you feel wanted and then they they rip you apart later, and then and they they'll they'll keep you in you know they'll keep you in a state of terror, and then a state of love, and then terror, and then confusion, and then yeah. If you'll share the video that you had shared with me, what is significant about this is that we've grown up in a culture cult you are that has raised Freud onto a pedestal, but who was Freud's nephew? his nephew um Bernays. was it not no, or was he the was he the uncle no it was it was i believe though no, the connection Bernays. i don't believe is connect i don't believe he's biologically connected but anna, anna freud is i believe it um uh, it, it, he was freud she was freud's niece i believe i believe so there's a direct correctly. connection between freud and Bernays, and well we are because anna about. freud worked with edward Bernays. yeah well, and then his work gets promoted and elevated, even though mm -hmm. before Bernays, he was just another theorist. And now we've grown up in a cult, sure, that yes. would have us believe that his theories were better than other theories and foundational. And so um, if you if you'd share the the century of the self is the movie. I, I, I put it here, the century of the self, and then there's like the power of nightmares yeah. that's less to do with psychology that's more to do with ideology um yeah. and then there's um all oh, if, you'll, if you'll just share those in there um and then we can we can kind of move into the next part of the presentation around this but thank you for bringing that forward and definitely um as part of mind control programming and propaganda if we don't know where things come from or the influences, then we're not going to be able to understand why certain theorists received more acclaim than what others did. Um, so was there, was there anything else that you wanted to um, add in there or anybody else want to jump in with a contribution, Bella? Yeah, I could provide a, a tie into the residential schools. Beautiful. Um, well, more of the whole, thing that happened with the indigenous as the um you know, the settlers or there was a whole bunch of europeans came over 
in America, it was more of a genocide, whereas in Canada, there it was less of a genocide and more of a, I don't know, culture side or the, the, the decision in Canada was more to uh, uh, wipe out their identity, much as the same as China is doing to Tibet, to turn them to, to re-educate children that they're Chinese and not Tibetan. And this is done to remove their power because they discovered when they came here that, that these societies were, uh, despite what we've been told, were very advanced, very democratic, very in touch with the land, had superior um, abilities to heal. Even to this day, Western medicine uh, has nothing to say about schizophrenia, but uh, indigenous uh, healing circles invite them right in and get right to work on it. Uh, they don't even blink an eye. They know exactly what to do. They know exactly how to put someone back together. And I think this is exactly what they were wiping out. Yeah. I guess it's the patriarchy of the church been going on for a long 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 time um uh, i don't know how far back it goes like uh, part of his story yeah so i, I think that's that, that that's that's what's happened here these these instead of merging with the indigenous to learn their ways uh to empower people um no we haven't really had real democracy in our uh, modern Western civilization since the Greeks. We have a representational democracy, which is clearly failing. Um, so we had the Greeks, and uh, at the same time, the indigenous were here in, in North America, um, with extremely well-established uh, uh, democratic systems, and, um, and clearly had reached a steady state uh, of health and society uh absolutely were not savages in in the slightest uh so this propaganda campaign started from the very beginning mm -hmm. um i'm not a historian so I, I i don't know the details of it but i suspect you know they sent messages back to uh the the the, 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 the empire to ask for more uh, military support saying all oh, these people are savages you know you got to send over more warships and we're going to take them out um, but that, you know, and same in South America too, the, uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Incas were clearly an advanced civilization. Uh, they just advanced in a different direction. They didn't go the way of the gun. Um, and I guess even in Japan with the samurai, mm -hmm. um, they didn't go the, you know, it, it, this is what led to their downfall is they, they weren't such savages as to require uh, automatic weapons to mow people down. There was such a high honor in war uh, that they, they, they kept it at swords and bow and arrows and all that kind of stuff uh, because there, there wasn't a desire for uh, absolute slaughter. Uh, at least in my perception of it. Um, I, I don't want to speak for the Indigenous as uh, I'm not Indigenous, but that's the way I perceive it. Yeah, and South American culture is also matrilineal, and so was Native culture, and a lot of the other powerful cultures that see the will of man, nefestation, as the what the woman's space is. We have to really come back to what our roles are as men and women and realize there is a transhumanism agenda that would have us be other than we are. And with that transhumanism agenda and off of what Chris had said as well, if anyone is confused or scared and if they generally don't know who they are, how could they possibly stand for something? There's that whole notion, if you don't know what you stand for, then you'll fall for anything. Because if we're not strong in who we are and whose we are, and stop letting religion re-legion us into tribes of BS or belief systems that make us think that the package we put the creator of all into is different from somebody else's package, then we're just letting all of the walls of the boxes of words keep us talking about the same thing, thinking it's different because we've added a different syntax. 
which is just the structure of the way that we put things together and then um, what it actually what the words actually mean so um, yeah if you don't know who you are then you risk falling for anything because that basic what I tried to pull up while Chris was speaking actually was the hierarchy of motivational needs by Manslow, which has self actualization at the top respect under that which you can only have with belonging and feeling safe within the world that you belong to and then safety and survival are below those but if we're just focused at the level of belonging safety or survival respect is not in the equation and we're seeing that systemically we're also seeing that with our history which is his story that we have believed to be ours and now we have a chance to say, okay, well, our story needs to be different than his or hers specifically, because now we need to become the creators instead of the reactors. And why I mentioned that is about the Tony Robbins is equivalent, which is certainty, variety, love, connection, significance, growth, and contribution as the equivalence when we think about certainty and then like chris said about in a scary movie you're not going to get scared if you know when, when it's coming so that element of surprise is the variability that we need so that we have certainty and we get a little surprise and then we can go beyond that but violence actually is met by the first four certainty variety love connection or just the connection when you've got an attacker like they're the biggest thing in your life and significance because they're the most significant one in your life if they're hurting you compared to when we step into actually creating then we have growth and contribution that we can actually play into but all of these shootings at schools or the gunmen that showing up we are living in a world where our children are being sent to indoctrination camps that are training them out of feeling true because how many of our children are being medicated? It's all designed to make us forget where we come from. And it's very narcissistic, which narcissism has become a catchword in today's society. So I wanted to bring it into the context, as Katya always says, about loving it, about loving energy and unloving energy or light. So Narcissism pers or narcissistic personality disorder, which is what narcissism is often called, is defined as a psychiatric disorder characterized by a pattern of self-importance, grandiosity, a constant need for admiration and attention, and a lack of empathy for others. Nine diagnostic criteria include grandiosity, preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance or beauty, belief that he or she is special, a requirement for excessive admiration, a sense of entitlement, a tendency to exploit others, an absence of empathy, a preoccupation with envy, and an attitude of arrogance. A personality organized around the need to neutralize or negate entrance into shameful states of mind. And then it actually goes in line with the victim triangle. Uh, which is interestingly not showing up. So the technology is uh, not loving what we're doing, but that's okay. Um, the victim triangle has the victim at the bottom, the rescuer there to save them from the punisher or persecutor that's out to get them when we're in a disempowered experience of creation. And uh, what I've heard years ago and I thought was interesting in relation to narcissism is that oftentimes we get onto that triangle, that upside down triangle, when we are blaming, complaining, justifying. So when we're blaming, it's like you get on the blame, complain, justify train and then you book it all the way down to victimhood and then you boot around the victim triangle and you bounce between your experience of not enough as the one that is at the bottom with everyone else out to get them the rescuer who has to save them because they don't believe they can do it themselves and the punisher that only 
has the is is just power stealing and energy vampirism, um, stealing from the one that feels powerless and therefore gives their power freely, which is culturally what we're experiencing now. And the Indian Residential Schools Act um, that in itself was not because the people didn't know they were powerful, but because they didn't realize who they were dealing with. And the devil doesn't show up wearing lycra in red with a tail and horns. The devil is just living backwards, lived backwards, the devil. That's what was the experience before those who were deceived were then traumatized and it then was brought into the culture of those who were abused and then passed on that abuse and trauma and the victimhood and also the inability to actually feel through some of it because it's what went what went on as as we'll we'll get into and um it it's in it's intense and it's tragic and culturally promoted in modern technology-based lifestyles narcissism is an inherent part of the the virtual reality if we look at tinder swiping left or right i don't even i've never used the dating app because i just it's not it's not my thing um and i don't want to throw out somebody just because of how they look and then the investigative work of actually getting down into who the who the man is that's from from my interest perspective it's a man not a woman but there's no judgment for anyone that would be looking for a woman either but um it's just swipe light left or right is so surface and that's what a narcissistic culture is really about and climbing the corporate ladder who can i step on in order to get ahead and then if we actually look at ahead as part of the languaging in law and legalese as to when the i is capitalized the head is then cut off and the stick is then boxed in top and bottom and that's the ultimate capitalization so it's it's in our letters it's reflective of what's happening to us and when we see that we can then see how the external world is what we've been taught to focus on and that's how narcissism works it is all about the outside world rather than going inside so narcissists always have a reason they can justify their actions they can blame it on someone else blame, complain, justify, complain about the situation and just repeat it and go in circles, which are mental loops. Because as I've said many times, I believe mental health is a trap that keeps us out of our heart where we can actually go down into the feelings and work through the energies and motion that are coming up in order to help guide us into a higher state of awareness, which we can only move through if we have the will to do it, which is why what's going on now with the con video game is a direct attack on our will. And with narcissism as the culture that is commonly endorsed cult worldwide right now, not the same in all places, but it's very much a use, abuse and recycle for self gain type of experience for a lot of people and the experience that we're having because it's a throwaway culture. And I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not above it, you know, like I, I have my own like frustrations that it's just like, ah, oh, throw in the towel. And then, you know, what are we giving up when we throw in the towel? So um, just being very honest and transparent that that is requiring a sacrifice that we may or may not be fully aware of what we're going to lose until we've lost it. But if it's all about us all the time and we're not thinking about how our actions are impacting others, it's a problem. And so I'm just thinking in my own head about my own stuff that's going on. Um, but it is also tied, I believe, to neuroticism. So I wanted to bring this in to the conversation too. Neuroticism is the trait disposition to experience negative effects, including anger, anxiety, self-consciousness, irritability, emotional instability, and depression. 
Persons with elevated levels of neuroticism respond poorly to environmental stress, interpret ordinary situations as threatening, and can experience minor frustrations as hopelessly overwhelming. So narcissism is actually said to be connected to neuroticism. It's just they can't put neurotic, they can't diagnose neuroticism on its own because it's so broad. And the DSM 54321, all of the DSMs ultimately are connected to their creation being tied to insurance, which so is our driving our, our driving, um, the, the industry of, of driving in itself, all of that came into being in connection to insurance as well. So we have to really get down to looking at the details in a way we never did before, including even to say that all legal documents will only ever refer to persons or individuals, but not the man or woman that was created by the same creator that created us all, who then created government in order to make our life easier. And because we forgot that even as the men and women working in those public servant positions, that we're still above it and we have the influence over it if we remember the law that one can actually change things. And we are the will, which is the, the space that has to come forward in order to demand grace and change. Um, so I wanted to just bring in a, uh, a meme I found right before this I felt was appropriate because I do believe that narcissism and neuroticism are connected to unloving light that we have brought in to a fight against ourselves and then using the other as the one that we project our uncomfortable feelings onto. And feelings and emotions are separate because feelings are the interpretation of the emotions or energies in motion. So love doesn't hurt us, people pleasing hurts us, pretending everything is okay hurts us, silencing ourselves hurts us, having no boundaries hurts us, not having our own back hurts us, self-abandonment hurts us, another person's unhealed shit hurts us, love liberates and relational challenges shine a light on where we are not yet liberated, Mark Groves. So I, before we step into the Indian residential schools piece, I just, I wanted to just touch on the pattern as I mentioned, but I wanna see before we go there, if anyone has anything that you wanna speak into around narcissism and not enoughness, because those very much are directly tied to one another. I, I just wanted to, because I gotta, I gotta leave. I just wanted to kind of close off what I was saying. There's, um, I saw one of your slides actually had the nine, points of narcissism I don't know if they're the exact ones that match in this documentary that I posted here but it's um this documentary is all on narcissism uh, the narcissistic personality disorder and narcissism in general and about the nine points of narcissism which were created by a professor in BC and um it, this is the best documentary I've ever seen I think I first saw it uh, six seven years ago uh, so it's it is fantastic. Take a look at it. it. Really explains a lot about how how narcissists narcissists operate. Cult leaders have generally about seven of the nine. People rarely have all of the nine, and most people like you know are fairly normal. You know we we might have one or two, but we don't have three or more. Three or more you must have in order to be classified as a narcissist. So I would strongly recommend. I know I've given you a bunch of different things here in terms of documentaries, like Century to Self, Power of Nightmares, All Watched Over, My Machines of Love and Grace, The Trap, I Can't Can't Get You Out of My Mind, which is Adam Curtis's latest. And then this other thing has nothing to do with Adam Curtis. It's just this documentary, really great one on narcissism. So I want to, I'll stop there. Um, I just wanted to contribute. And I know there's, there's hopefully there's, there's a tie in with respect to residential schools. I know that's, that's a, a huge topic um, that deserves a lot of analysis in terms of um, psychology and, you know, how could we let this happen over such a long period of time? as well as the law, a lot about the law there and um, and the Indian Act going back to 1876. There's a lot there. So we'll have to unpack it another time, but thank you so much for having me. And um, 
I, I hope I've contributed something that people can kind of take home and investigate for themselves. Thank you, Chris. You definitely have. And Thank I know uh, Annette needs to leave as well um, and okay. get into the uh, mom and baby homes in Ireland uh, where she is. Um, I know she had messaged and said she's going to have to leave soon. So okay. um, thank you, Chris. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Look okay. Forward. Goodbye, thank everyone. You. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Annette, if you have to get going, uh, we didn't really talk so much about the, the Indian schools, which would have tied into uh, the mom and baby homes, um, but I, I definitely want to see if there's anything based on what has been shared so far you might want to touch in and we can get into. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. And I'm, I'm with a friend here um, who um, Anna's, um, I think I mentioned Anna before to you. Um, Anna's um, looking to, to search for her siblings who she believes um, are into and um, Anna's a great campaigner for the cause and it just so happened that we met up today um, for, for another reason and I told her I was on Zoom and would she like to listen in and that so I might have to go but Anna might take over and say a few words beautiful um, and um, just to say like listen there like talking about the controlling and that I I'd say the um I the Catholic Church can <laughs> kind of control people in this country and put the fear of God in them and you had to if this happened to you this you had to if something like this happened you had to go and speak to the parish priest and then the parish priest sent the woman off to the mother and baby homes and then once they were there the nuns were brainwashed into like these women are evil and these children are spawn of the devil and this is what they used to say to the to the women like it's craziness so all of that ties in with the brainwashing and people believing and the narcissism of of the catholic church really so mm -hmm. yeah um, well the fear of god is a huge there's so much there contextually uh, because if we have a fear of the creator and the, the, our creator, we have an image of the creator as a punitive creator, then how are we going to think that we don't have that? Or how are we going to act in a way other than the way that we have painted the image of the one we came from? So mm. the fear of God piece is huge within all of all of what's going on because if we're fearing the grand overall designer and we're forgetting that we are the co-creators of our own reality that you anna are looking for siblings that may have wound up in a tragic situation because that's that's what you're called to because you you can do that and you can move towards that and you understand the injustice of of what took place it's just going like you're creating a rea like you're bringing that into your reality to to honor the ones that came through the same ones that you did because we are all so connected which is why generational trauma has been a huge tool used against so many tribes, especially ones that do have a very strong feminine culture um, as the foundation where, where women have the place in the home. When, when there is a strong home, we feel safe as children. But if we don't yeah. have a strong home, then we don't. And then if that home is destroyed because women that got pregnant because they hadn't married their man yet, and how often does that happen now? Where like, it happens all the time that you get knocked up and then you have a baby and you start a life with your, with your new your partner that is just like, whoops. And then it turned into something magical or maybe it didn't. But if we're holding on to that idea of the punitive, judgmental, forceful, righteous God, and then we're judging ourselves, and we've also got indoctrinated ones that are being the vessels through which that evil is spewed, and then we pass that on because of the amount of trauma that comes on, it's insane, which is doing the same thing we've always done, expecting different results. Um, yeah, so it's, I, like, it's like a karmic pattern, you know? karmic karmic pattern you know like they said you carry it but i mean i stopped going to church when i was 13 so 
I never really wanted to be there in the first place. I believe in more animism, you know, life. There's life in everything. Mm -hmm. And we are part of the one river of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, and what happens, happens. But what they done was evil. That it is a cult. It was the cult idea that was the real problem and the indoctrination. I mean, how could anybody take their own family member and surrender them to the power of these people and force them out and exile them from their family? But they had been indoctrinated and that's what the indoctrination told them they should do with their own family. Mm -hmm. And the people they send them to are the people that indoctrinated the family in the first place. And I'm also involved with on the sidelines with some of the stuff that's happened in Canada. Uh, I, the Duplessé orphans. You know them? No, not familiar, but... Um, they... Um, you're in Canada, are you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was Toronto or Ontario. Um, Duplessé was the like prime minister of that province. And there was a num there was a, a mother and baby home there, and he went to the nuns, and the nuns were getting something like a dollar a month or a dollar a week for to find the children, and he suggested that if the nuns turned it into a mental home, they get a dollar fifty per head, and they put bars on the window, and the children were then all diagnosed congenital idiots, and they started to test serious drugs on them. It was, it was, they had a big, they had a tribunal into that as well as the uh, ethnic people as well. And it was horrific what went on there. And there was sexual abuse and all sorts of things. So you had that over and above the Aboriginal peoples. So that was another strain. So I'm also involved with them um, around the Lejac, you know, the Lejac school. No, that's one of the, uh, that was run by the Oblock Fathers from Ireland and they ran the uh, that particular home for the indigenous people. Very, very bad. So like contacts have been made between here and Canada, which is good because it's it's not just individual countries. This is a worldwide cult. And but it's very difficult. You have to do your own groundwork. And they're doing their own groundwork, but I mean, I do reckon the universe has a plan to unveil the. And I mean, it, it's absolutely scandalous as well from another point of view because people are not people live in fear of living, and they need something to rely on, which is spirituality, and they find it in groups and they find it in churches, but nobody should use that as a tool to manipulate people, or to control them, you know, as you said, like the triangle, they're not the mediator between you and your God. You can go directly to your God. I mean, who gave you a this and said that you should be, I need you to talk to you to have a word with the man above. So they've also destroyed that in people, you know, this direct link to what they need mm -hmm. for to keep them going because some people just can't cope with life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's that's another shame on them as well, you know, just for people for people who weren't touched by the homes or anything like that. But, you know, then their family has lived the conscience and then their children has to live with stigma of this. And, you know, and then they're still care and they're caught in this netherland between they don't know whether they believe or whether they don't believe and they profess not to believe. But when you scratch the surface, you find something in there and you ask them, they don't know why, but they believe it. And it's, it's all very crazy. Well, a, what is a belief is what we have to go back to because anybody that says, I don't believe, that's BS. That's a belief mm. system that says, oh, I, I don't believe, but in what? And what do you believe in instead of that? It's like uh, being an atheist, like an atheist is a belief system. I believe in nothing. And I'm firmly stuck in the idea that there's no, no nothing. And you try to put an atheist and a, and a religious person together. Both of them have a belief system. Mm -hmm. One is based on I believe in nothing. The other is I believe in God. And the two of them can fight for their corner. Like uh, both of them do have a belief system. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, no, I've severed all my ties from all of that, but it just, mine is more to make, um, we'd say governments accountable, um, you know, true justice, accountability, prosecutions and restitution for survivors, because that's the only way that you can kind of finish that period of history. It, it's not necessarily going to finish the cult interaction, but then you have to start changing things on a societal level. 
you know, because I travel quite a bit and I've been in countries where like there was Muslim, you know, uh, it could be Hindu, there could be, and it, it's a belief system as well. But I mean, in general, most people just want to get up in the morning, get the children to school, get out, you know, go to work, you know, go to visit their, their church once, once a week and they need that. But in that, there's an awful lot more than just, you know, them and their gods, you know, it becomes into, it can get very, very sinister at the highest level, like what we've seen would happen with the mother and baby homes and the indigenous people. But even on a lower level, um, there's still that control factor. Mm -hmm. And yet on, a, on another level, people need people and they need a belief system. And in small communities, it's a very important tool to keep people together and to keep them uh, socially engaged and to keep them morally and spiritually uplifted. So you can't just go in there with a hammer and take all that away. You, really what they should be doing in the church is taking, chopping it down, having a look, taking out the bad bits like in an apple, get rid of them. Okay, we have to deal with what happened already, but now clean it up and just go back and do what you're supposed to be doing. It's, you know, it's like you could be a guru, you could be a Hindu, you could be a yogi master. Just aid the people in getting through this life that they find difficult. Make it right. Make it right, you know. So. The problem is, is so many people have traded so much in order to have the positions of power that they earned by stepping on other people oftentimes in order to get into those positions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people that are, you know, high up in the corporate ladder don't have a lot of friends within the corporation. Yes, there's a lot, of soci a lot of sociopaths and psychopaths in there. If Absolutely. they were out in a different area, that they would be show different traits, but they have them in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, then, and then you've also got the Peter principle as well, like where people are, you know, they're actually, um, they get promoted above the level of their own capabilities and they become hindrances. So you've got all this dynamic when you go into work situations, that's another world. But all these traits are human traits and they carry through every aspect of life, mm -hmm. you know, with your neighbors, with your religion, with your work, with your families, you know. That's part of the human condition. I heard you talking about Maslow's theory there, you know. So, and Freud, I mean, I touched on a bit of that, but yeah, we're, we're basically human beings. And no matter what, we'll always be human beings. And no matter what you give us or what you take away from us, we'll always have those traits. And, and it's how we use them. It's how yeah. we use them. It absolutely is how we use them. And then it's also about understanding language. And the hue of man is one aspect of the man, which is why it was the creation created by the corpse of the government entity that then owns what it creates because a man or woman drops our standing in order to status as a human instead. So I'm, I don't mean to be... Um, <laughs> pedantic or, or to to be a no, no i understand you could start getting into the straw man and all this kind of thing and i know but i've, I've had it all around me you know and it's a deep uh, rabbit yeah. hole. Uh, it's a deep rabbit hole for sure yes yeah, so i mean i i like i'm 66 now and i i was just saying to that i studied a little bit of psychology and studied a little bit of law and then my uh, son-in-law is a shamanic healer as well, and I've always been interested in that area. So I'd kind of be very open to a lot of things. But just when you see the cold face of this cruelty of what they've done and the damage, the unbelievable damage yeah. that they've caused. And then when you see the resilience of the human condition, some people, they can cope with it better. Other people are just totally broken, taking themselves off and hung themselves on trees and you know, children raped and buggered, you know, for 10 years and having to live through that. And um, then then, there's, then the door open and put out and then they're supposed to just carry on with a normal life. They don't even know what a life is. Life skills, no, nothing. They just opened the door at 16 and they were just told go. Yeah. Well, this is this is the insanity of our our what's going on now on a far less far lesser scale in terms of the trauma and like kid, children that are in families now are not dealing with having 
controllers they live with and are completely controlled by though some children have that experience in their homes too but like I was having a conversation with a, with a teenager uh, yesterday actually who was talking about like she's in grade 10 and like in a couple of years she's going to be going to college and so she's really getting excited about you know that and then she's going to have to get a job in order to pay for things in order to prepare for that and it's just like well what do you want to do when you get there like what that's a, that program is a box that somebody else put together that now you're going to focus on getting into their box for the next two years while it's a three year program and you've got two years, which is like two thirds of the program that you could actually be preparing for getting the skills to be able to do that so then maybe somebody will hire you and actually pay you to take the program and to work for them and use the skills that you developed in the time leading up to it. But our young ones have been so indoctrinated to do what's normal, which is get the higher education that is actually taking us away from the family unit. It's like I went to university when I was 17. I turned 18 the next month, but I was 17 when I left and I, I came back and I commuted. So I had a different experience, but I look at how we have been ingrained to go into indoctrination camps, which are universities and higher education systems that are very different from what many have experienced with being sent into institutions, yet at the same time, it's all setting us up because then the ones that went to the indoctrination camps then get brainwashed, which we talked about menticide and on on the last call that, that Katya and I did on Wednesday about uh, breaking down bullying. And we start seeing that it is the systematic dumbing down of society that we are facing right now. And the, re the Residential Schools Act, whether it be the Indian Residential Schools Act, which is based, it's not the Residential Schools Act, but um, the Indian Act was what made it possible for this to even take place in the first place. I did want to also, I want to share this screen. Um, I want to get back to the um, presentation and share about the what I kind of put together just in terms of a slide with some context for anyone that might not be so aware of the Indian residentials or the residential schools in the Indian Act. Um, but Juan in the comments uh, had said, at the time, much of this was also part of a silent invasion. The modality of war had shifted from frontline invasion to strategic indoctrination yeah. under treaties, which would superficially represent peace for the natives. But served ulterior motives instead absolutely well, you, look at, you look in the ottoman empire they took the children away and you behave we have your child so it was a form of kidnapping that was one thing they were used against the indians like control yourself we're taking they were told they were taken to school but they weren't they were taking them to a camp i um but there was actually we're hold your child hostage so it was part of an invasion strategy as well yeah, it fully was. Welcome to take your land and, you know, like, so do what you're told. We have your children captive. Yeah. And now you better start learning a new way. And we're also going to whiteify them, you know what I mean? And indoctrinate them into the, the ways of our ways. That yeah. we consider civilized. Yeah, that yeah, we consider. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is completely uncivilized, truly. They've done it, they've done it in Australia with the Aborigines. They've done it in Australia with the Aborigines. Yeah. You know, there was there was one one girl and she was being interviewed. She was our father was Irish and her mother was Aboriginal and she was in her 60s, 70s. And they came and they took the children away. They were living quite happily. Eight or nine children broke up the whole family and scattered them to the four winds because and then they were being trained for service because that's what they're good for, you know. So. But I mean, the, the, these uh, all these topics are so vast. Like, I mean, you could have an actual webinar or, or a, a chat a zoom on any of them but yeah. i mean it's very hard to fix all these pictures into one because people are being disempowered now i mean there's been a whole generation disempowered with technology like i mean we're on it we're using it but i mean like children you it's it's it, they nearly have an addiction now to it yeah you know you can't if you lose your mobile phone you have a nervous breakdown you know like kids you know you see small babies swiping across screens like this the mother gives them they actually know how to do it. It's maybe yeah. a year old. They're doing this, you know, they're mimicking. And their brain is all in there so they don't have to think. 
you know, and I mean, the thing about universities, I don't think there's really much pro problem with people going to university. It's not necessarily always going into a box because a long time ago you went in and it was a good forum for discussion. It was a good forum, but now you've got all this blocking out culture and you this cancel culture and you've got all this political correctness. You can't express an opinion, but you're upset in somebody's set of values. I mean, I'm sorry, in a healthy debate, I should be able to say without offending you, if I use some colloquialism like um, that wasn't meant to offend, that you, then you, you're offended by it. Now I have to kind of say I'm sorry, but I didn't really mean it in that context. And you know, it, the world's gone crazy. That's all I can say. But regarding the writing of, of previous wrongs, it, it has to be. But it's still going on in today's world. You know, women being trafficked, yeah. children being trafficked, not necessarily by the Catholic Church. I mean, the amount of, of that is going on, it, it's, it's huge at this stage. Yeah, absolutely huge. Well, that's part of the reason that we've started having these calls just to start connecting and for everyone to be able to come together and be able to start having these conversations where we're not looking to be offended and we're not looking for anyone to be disrespectful to one who may have a different perspective or opinion because there are far too many people that are looking to be offended nowadays. Because yeah, it's a kind of a so culture. It's, a, it's becoming a culture now. Yeah. You know, like I mean, it's it, you're actually we're actually walking on. Are you going? Oh, yeah, I have to go. Bye, guys. Sorry. Thanks, Anna. Anna's gonna stay on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are on tender hooks now because you know you, you can't have a joke. You can't um you, you can't speak freely. Um, you've got this council culture. You know, I I watch people in universities. Uh, sorry, I have to go as well. I'm so sorry. I have okay. to take this call. It's just like, well, perfect, really to... perfect timing. No okay, problem. Sorry, guys. We gotta go. Okay. We'll just we'll just mute you out and uh, you, thank you for showing up and we'll come together and we'll, we'll talk more about the mom and baby homes next time. Uh, so appreciate you for showing up today. Yeah. Sweet. I'll, I'll mute this anyway. That's perfect. All right. Thanks, Emil. Thanks for listening and thanks for all the words, Laura. Beautiful. Like, always a pleasure to listen to <laughs> bye sweet okay and so um i wanted to say in the comments uh juan had also said the morgan theory saw natives as savages and accordingly used his ideology to justify atrocities towards the natives with the pretext of helping them evolve from savages to barbaric to civilization so the morgan theory is a theory that we'll have to look into then. Um, so I appreciate your sharing that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to touch on just the pattern of the Indian residential schools. Um, residential schools were government sponsored religious schools that were established to assimilate Indigenous children with Euro Canadian culture. In residential schools were created by Christian churches and the Canadian government as an attempt to both educate and convert Indigenous youth and to assimilate them into Canadian society. In total, an estimated 15 or one, uh, 150,000 First Nation, Inuit, and Métis children attended residential schools. That's just the reference that I pulled off of a website online. I feel like there was a, a lot more, um, but I have no, uh, I have nothing to found that other than it just, that number seems very low to me. Um, but interestingly, being 30 minutes from Brantford, where I am, the Mohawk Institute in Brantford, Ontario, accepted its first boarding students in 1831 and it wasn't until 1996 that the last residential school was closed in Saskatchewan which is insane doing the same thing over again expecting different results which we must stop doing which is why we're having this gathering today so I appreciate each of you for showing up and contributing once I read this other piece that I pulled off of the Canadian Encyclopedia about the experience in residential schools. Students were isolated, 
think about this from the con video game perspective and the experience we've all been going through as well, because it's the pattern that is so important to bring into focus, because as Anna had said, and others can attest, there are atrocities happening with the same foundational pattern that if we don't shift the pattern, the results continue. So students were isolated and their culture was disparaged or scorned. They were told they were not enough as they were. They were removed from their homes and parents were separated from some of their siblings as the schools were segregated according to gender. So siblings didn't get to know one another or have an opportunity to speak. I had seen one gentleman saying he only knew his sister by waving in the dining hall in passing, didn't get to know her specifically. In some cases, they were forbidden to speak their first language, even in letters home to their parents. The attempt to assimilate children began upon their arrival at the schools where their identity as who they were before was shifted, which happens in the military, which happens when you go into any kind of indoctrination school, you're given their uniform, uniform fall into form with the unit. So their hair was cut. And hair is actually said to be an extension of wisdom. And so this is like antennas. And so when your hair is shed or cut, then you don't have the same receptors available to you. And it was also, uh, it had a lot to do with culture and respect and warriors had long hair. And so cutting it off meant there were not warriors that saw themselves as such because their garb, their uniform, their, uh, I wanna say uh, outfit, but it's the, what do, what do you call it? Like a battle regalia, their, their battle, their armor. That's what I was looking for. Their armor was shed when their hair was cut. And they were stripped of their traditional clothes and given new uniforms. In many cases, they were also given new names. Christian missionary staff spent a lot of time and attention on Christian practices, while at the same time, they criticized or denigrated indigenous spiritual traditions. So they were told that they were not civilized. They were not all of the things they were trying to move them towards. And the insanity is that everything promised when the reconciliations and, and acknowledgements were made as to what happened, which hasn't been full, but um, some of what has been acknowledged, what we don't, as regular, as part of the public, we're not privy to behind the scenes dealings or the fact that with legalese there are trick words in it, which include the word includes, meaning it's a one sided agreement. So when Indian and everything promised to the Indian was then clumped under the term Aboriginal, Ab being no longer original, Aboriginal, Metis, Inuit, all of those statuses that went under a larger status did not transfer over with the benefits promised to the original statuses those promises were made to because they clumped under it, but they only went into it. They didn't get to bring all of their goods with it. So um, the insanity of what we're dealing with now is largely because we have been trained to be other than we are, to believe ourselves to be less, and narcissism and that whole cult, you're, the culture of it is a huge part of that. So I appreciate you're listening to that presentation of something I haven't personally experienced, but I believe we're all affected by because it's part of the culture and it's like the question they used to ask to buy entry into sacred and secret societies. Like, how do you know when you're suffering? You know you're suffering when you see another suffer and you know that you are them and they wouldn't be suffering if you didn't have the suffering within you for them to be able to be magnetized into your experience to show you what you need to face. My BS, take it, leave it. But I'd love to hear what someone else has to share um, as we have been here for quite some time. And I, I respect and honor each of you for showing up and appreciate your insights because iron sharpens iron. And I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the sharpest iron, but I get sharper when I mix with you guys. Uh, well, to, to your previous um, comment on, on how the indigenous 
weren't aware of what they were dealing with um, has to do with the way narcissism actually comes about. Uh, no child is born a narcissist. It happens during the developmental years. Certain genes are not turned on in the brain development that uh, uh, create those empathic pathways, neural pathways. And those genes are, act all genes are activated by uh, external stimuli. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Bruce Lipton. Uh, mm -hmm. He takes a deep dive on that stuff. Uh, Spontaneous Evolution, the book everyone would do well to read. So um, it's a feed forward mechanism um, as uh, parents fail to uh, provide um, the, the intense amount of love and attention that a developing child needs because we're separating and segregating everyone, not just in those societies, but in all societies. Uh, for example, I think it's a, a extremely shameful for anyone to tell a woman to go raise a child by herself and take a corporate job and you can do this all alone there's no evidence that that's healthy in fact there's a lot of evidence to show that's extremely unhealthy the indigenous populations raise their children in a village and uh, one mother is all mothers so if one mother in any instant it has to go and do something she just hands the child to another mother and that child that child's need for attention is not interrupted. And so whether that individual mother has to deal with something, um, whatever it is, well, I'm gonna list a bunch of examples, whatever it is, another mother immediately steps in and takes over while, that, while the, the blood mother has to go and, and take care of whatever. So, so the children in these indigenous, they didn't have narcissism, it didn't exist because of the way they were raising their children because of their extremely tight social fabric mm -hmm. and uh it again i would not being there but I, I would guess that that perhaps that was one of the most insulting things maybe the egos of the the conquerors came across mm -hmm. um and so they, they had no concept of this this type of behavior that uh that, that people could behave in such narcissistic and egotistical and, and, and stunningly selfish, murderous ways. Um, for them, even in war, when they're killing each other, there was honor and there was a ritual. <clears throat> and um, it, it, it was very much, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's certainly not the way uh, our society has conducted war, especially nowadays with drone bombings, where uh, the operator is in another country in a bunker with air conditioning, and then they, you know, press a button, and boom, hundred people are dead. Um, you know, there's no, there's no look in the eyes. Uh, I studied a bit of martial arts, and there's, um, there's a, a known, I don't know what you call it, not a feature, but. When you strike another person, if you strike in anger or feel fear, you're far less powerful than if you strike in love. And a warrior is really just looking to be killed by someone who loves them. Um, and so in, in those warrior cultures, there, there's a very different phenomenon happening than in the, in the cultures of the, of the, the conquering nation of the world, uh, which, which sought to, to truly destroy and wipe out and obliterate and then replace uh, with their own system. And I think we've seen the result of that hasn't really turned out the best for the planet. And uh, it's my feeling that uh, a return to these old ways to sit, as I've sat with the indigenous circles and ceremonies and heard the stories, and I've come to understand that they really do know the way forward. Thank you, Bella. And yeah, the Hopi tradition says that it is the Western woman that will turn this ship around. If it is to be saved, it will be us because we are the will of manifestation and we empower our men to be strong. And that's part of the reason having a strong union is so essential to being able to do what we can do better together. And the mother archetype being the way that <laughs> families were raised, you, your whole family was the tribe. And I, I've said this so many times, it's like, we have been warned about the nuclear war 
all of our lives, or at least for all of mine, that's been the big pressing thing to be aware of. But were we ever in any way warned that the nuclear family model might be the war? where the child was born into a family with parents that didn't have availability emotionally to support them or the time to do it because we live in a world where the business of busyness is how we get our self image and our self worth from what we're able to do. And our parents aren't available and so then the child is left to seek that attention elsewhere without having the training to actually meet their own emotional needs which is why mental health is such a trap because then we're just up here and not in in here does anyone else have a contribution that you would like to add to the conversation at at this point I'll um, contribute a little bit here. And, and thanks for everyone sharing. This is an amazing conversation. I've taken, uh, taken a lot from it. Um, so it's, it, there's so much to speak to because it's just a, a very um, in-depth um, amount of things that come to play with this conversation. So I'm someone who always looks at the core. I like to see what at the core, why is this happening? What, what, where did it begin? And um, if, if you can see, like I, I call it the crown and the cross. It's an agenda that two major entities have come together. And I loved what you said, Laura, about um, there's this thing about keeping the parents busy. So I looked at symbolism a lot too. And, and if you look at the Pope, he's got a staff and on top of the staff is a pine cone. The pine cone represents the new seeds, the regeneration. So the church's role is to ensure to create a new generation of the same diminishment in a way, because I believe that the diminishment story began um, in the the stories that were written in in the Bible, it depends on how you're you're reading it. But um, having been a Catholic myself and entrenched in that for many years, I always felt like there was something um, I don't know. Like for myself, my own experience was as I felt diminished. I felt not good enough. There was this um, thing about humiliation and shame. So there was this kind of backgroundness that. I felt in, in the church. So it's not a coincidence um, when we've got a background for um, this not good enough that we're able to be controlled um, more easily. So what I wanted to do was just tie the residential school and the, res the, in the indigenous to this as well. So they represented um, natural law. So they were very much about integrity. They were very much about responsibility. They um, honored um, everything from the you know the sand to the the sky and <clears throat> they represented sovereignty they had a system that worked and the cross and the crown's agenda was complete contrast to that so they wanted to be able to bring in uh, an ability to control people and so what they would have to do is unfortunately um, in, in, in their own way, kind of get rid of that culture and that, you know, that kind of community to be able to in, in implement this new agenda and strategy. And where I think this really comes down to is when you create a society that has to earn their right to food, earn their right to shelter, you will always have a society in fear, in diminishment, never because they've got the system rigged. They've got it rigged where you will never be able to get past that. And we are, we're, we're seeing it today. Look how much you know groceries cost. They put up the gas prices. They so um, what I think is underway right now is um, this push on keeping the fear at bay and really through this. Um, money system 
the money system right now. And it's, again, if we're, um, we're it's about earning our right to food and, and shelter, then our worth automatically gets tied to our status, what we're doing, what we have. There's this whole play on that versus the being, our being and, and so forth. So I really think that what it comes down to at the core is understanding who we are individually. So it starts with our own sovereignty. It has to do with understanding who we are at the core. So self-knowledge for me is, is a key um, thing that we should be underway with in regards to being uh, in an inquiry about what it is that we can um, tap into within ourselves as a, an understanding, um, as an as lived, instead of a belief that we're believing someone else's story or we're believing what other people have said, it's taking on our lives and, and having the experience for ourselves in regards to who we are. And I believe it's like a transformation from the inside out. When we do that, automatically what will happen is, is we will be um, transforming the outside world as well. So I think what's missing is stewardship. That's what the indigenous for me represented. They honored and held in high respect everything. Nothing got wasted. And we're in a very much of a throwaway society. We take things where there's not even a thought. And it's all because inside of us, there's something that's diminished within us that allows us to have the outside world diminished as well. Yeah heal ourselves, heal the world. So being able to go within and find those answers. So the empowered alternative to the victim triangle, Katya and I had shared in the presentation on uh, Wednesday. And if you haven't seen that summit, I think it's worthwhile uh, to go and check it out. And we'd love to see your comments down below as well. Um, but the empowered alternative to the victim triangle is in the place of a rescuer, we have a coach. So instead of saving us from ourselves, we actually, as the coach, hold the space for the one that feels they need to be saved to actually see their own resourcefulness within. And so coaches hold the space for the answer to emerge. Instead of being the punisher, we can actually be the challenger. So we challenge an idea so that we say, hey, I maybe agree with this or this, but that, and then by questioning that, I then have to go deeper into my understanding and relationship with that. And by doing that, I understand that better. So the coach and the challenger are the empowered alternatives to the rescuer and persecutor and then the creator is the empowered alternative to the victim that believes everything's out to get them and the creator says what can i create today so when we get into that space of really seeing what we've already been creating and the insanity of this world that we're sharing suggests that all of us have more inner work to do, which is the reason these conversations come together. And like Katya, when you were talking about the staff and the pine cone on the top of it, the pine cone is about the pineal gland, which is being attacked. And we also have to look at even the Christmas tradition of bringing a pine tree into the home. Well, the pine represents the spine. And then we put presents at the bottom of the pine tree. And that's our, gift, that's our offering of energy because it is our time, energy, effort, attention, and money that ultimately are the team players that are being played against us or are playing for us. And when we give that gift of energy at Christ mass, where the Christ within each of us is being harvested, <laughs> LSD, Lucifer, Satan, devil, regardless of whether you like the LSD of this world or not, that comes down the pine tree of the spine of the tree and then takes the offerings we give it. If we look at things from a symbolic level or a mythic level or an energetic level instead of just the literal level, then that's where things start to come down to a different, deeper level. And we could say, whoa, that's dark. And then we can decide what we're going to do with how we play with that or whether we play with it at all. 
So really, I hope that this has been an empowering conversation. I hope that as we bring some of the less talked about conversations to the fore, that each of us will feel more free to contribute and relate it to our own circumstances for how that, that lesson, that pattern is present and how we can actually work within ourselves so that we can work through the emotional residue of emotional scar tissue we have from the trauma we've experienced in our own lives and from all of the trauma we inherited from traumatized people. Because we've all likely heard the expression, hurting people hurt people. The alternative to that though, is healed people, heal people. So everything that we do, it's not just about hurting. We all hurt at times and the hurting helps to break us open if we're willing. And every time we break open and then call back more of our heart presence that was leaked out when we got scared, when we were in fear, we become whole again. Instead of having a hole in our life or in our hearts, we become whole with the W for all parts united. I'm aware that it is 3.30, so we have been together for an hour and a half, and I've gotten a lot from the conversation today. I want to know if there's anyone else that would like to share anything else. We're, the space is still open. Um, I just want to, I want to be respectful of everyone's time and, and honor your commitment to be here with us for this amount of time to contribute in the ways that you have and your energy and your presence and being present um, is, is a huge part in that. So thank you for each of you for showing up and being present and listening and, and even if it's not agreeing, it, that's not required here either. This is why we want to have these spaces to be able to just breathe into the space and come home to ourselves together in common unity. Anna, we can hear you. You can hear your lips moving, but you're muted. If you're trying to talk to us, let me, uh, there you go. I've just asked you to unmute there. Yeah, um, I, I, I kind of wonder what, what are you trying to achieve here? You know, that's, um, I, and I understand I follow everything because I'm 66 years of age and I, I followed a lot of the paths you've spoken about, you know, the self-knowledge and self-empowerment and, you know, heal or heal thyself and, you know, uh, and I'm not dismissing and I'm not being disrespectful, mm -hmm. but here, is this just a safe space? But do we have a topic we're trying to kind of work on? Yeah. I know the world we live in has gone crazy. And I mean, the total control is there. Like, I mean, they started with the COVID. I mean, I could speak about that. Now we've got wars and they just like um, Naomi Klein's book, you know, like the, the shock doctrine and they're keeping people on the back foot and they're, they're totally disempowering us. But this was seen coming down the line from, you know, you know, 1984, George Orwell. And I mean, he said in 1950 that they would do this. And, you know, it's, it's very predictable, but we're in very uncertain times. And then that's where you have to go into the self-reliance. And not everyone has that capability. You know, there's people only exploring what you're saying now. And it's becoming, it's becoming a very uh, hot topic, let's say, at the moment, which is good. Because you do have to look inside yourself. Because we, we've been created and we're also the creator mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. we're part, it's cyclical. You know, we come from nothing, we go to nothing. We are nothing, but we are the origin of everything, you know. So, um, yeah, but it's very interesting. But I, for uh, topic wise, I, I, I really would love to know, like, are we going to, uh, are we focused on a topic or is it just a general conversation space? That's, uh, does that make sense to you? Both. It's, so the topic, the series itself is mind control, programming and propaganda. So we did the first call two weeks ago and we set okay. today's call and we're going to have another call in two weeks. We just need to set the time for that. So um, feedback in the comments if you wanted to share whether this time works. Um, 
I feel like these conversations are incredibly important to be having because not everyone is aware of as much as what we may be here and others who aren't on the call are aware of even more. Um, John Paul, thank you. He's got no audio, but he's going to be right back. And I, I know that he's going to have uh, lots to be able to share as well, even though he came a little bit later to the party. Um, but ultimately, it's really creating a space because I, mm -hmm. So oftentimes we feel like we need to have an agenda, we need to know exactly what we're going to do and we need to have it all ready beforehand and yes, and I feel like there's also a really important piece of simply having a space where we can come together and be in common unity and build community and build the ones who join that community to be able to connect because if warriors don't know how to recognize one another, as I've said since the beginning, what happens when, if, if a disaster, well, we're already, if we're in a crazy time, but we don't care so much until we know who people are. That's the reality of things. That's, that's why systems are so dangerous. And John, Paul, thank you for coming in and I hope your audio is working and, and I definitely wanna get, uh, get your feedback, whether you've been uh, participating in Facebook there um, or, or whether uh, you're coming into the end of our, our meeting, but uh, definitely not wrapping it up before you've had an opportunity to share as we're part of a messenger group that um, you share quite a lot of valuable stuff. It's just the fact that if we don't know how to recognize one another, we don't care so much, which is why mm -hmm. corpses and corporate entities, which an entity is a thought form that has accrued energy and a corporate entity is a corpse that we have to give our life force to in order for it to have any energy. Yeah, and so if we create a space where we can actually start to connect and care for one another, then if we were in a situation like I had shared, I think in the last one, or in, I, I forget when I shared, I, I'd shared about a story um, that Carolyn Mason shared about a, a native man that had run away from home when he was young. And then he ended up uh, getting recruited by the military because he was an artist and would sketch things. And he ended up sketching some um, military tanks or, or um, boats in the in the water. And, and so it ended up that he got recruited and he became a scout for the military. But before he became the scout in the military and the piece that I had left out in the story when I told it the first time was that he'd run away with a friend and then they met up with this German kid. And then the three of them kind of went around and they were sketching and living on the land and all of that right well it ended up that this scout ended up being in the army and then he became a prisoner of war and so he was tortured and I talked about that in the last episode but basically he was being transported and he was going to be sent to a to a concentration camp and he was going to be exterminated and it ended up that uh, he in passing on his way to the train he came in contact with the German kid that he had him and his friend had lived with out when they were homeless and connected with and cared for. And when that German man saw this prisoner who was being sent to his death, he made arrangements and that man ended up going somewhere else. And he wound up at the veterans hospital where he, um, he was, uh, he, he was told he would never walk again because he he had his nails he's had his feet nailed to the ground and stood there for days and all kinds of other horrendous torture where he'd lost fragments of his soul because that's a part of this spiritual war and so he was never going to walk again he was told and there is a huge amount of power that we give authority figures which who become the authors I tie my identity to who tell us things are going to be this way and then we create that because we're good doc we're good patients or we're good students or we're good little girls and boys right on the inside and so he ended up deciding that because he was never going to walk and he was never going to leave this veterans home he wanted to go back to his tribe one last time and tell them goodbye and then go back and live out his days and in, in a bed unable to live and when he went back the elders in his in his tribe had a meeting and they said you need to call your spirit back and so they threw him into water and they stood around and they rallied and they encouraged him to go through every moment every memory that he had of the trauma where he had lost a part of his soul into the not now 
And so he went through and he collected them all. And there was the final image of the German soldier that had fed him maggots and, and he, he hated this man and he couldn't find forgiveness for this man until finally when they insisted and they stood and the tribe supported him and calling back his soul fragments to the point where finally that the, the, the soldier spoke to him, the spirit of that soldier came through and said, there was no food around. It was the only food that I could find to keep you alive. And that's why he'd fed him maggots, food with maggots in it. It was the only food around. And so then he was able to find forgiveness and compassion. And he was able to walk again and became a healer and a shaman. And that was how Carolyn Mace came to know of him. And I say that story again, because it is very powerful. But the only reason his soul was saved was because that German soldier who was just a kid that was homeless too at the same time and got in communion, common unity with mm -hmm. these boys, recognized him, knew him and cared enough to change the course of, of his fate. And that's why these meetings are happening. Yeah, and that's a very powerful. Uh, I've been going to a spiritual healer for over 15 years and we do that soul retrieval and stuff like that. So I do understand where you're coming from, you know, making yourself others. Still, everybody's trying to pull back the fragments from the darkness where you've hid them to kind of save yourself. But you do have to kind of retrieve them, you know, but that's not for everyone to kind of understand. People are at different stages of learning. Yeah. You know, I'm 66 now. I have two children, four grandchildren. So I'm not saying I'm more experienced than anybody else, but because I've took that path, mm -hmm. I know a bit about that path, let's say. That's just my journey. Yeah. And I mean, there, I've met people, I've met a guy and he's less than 30 and he's well, probably further on the path than I am. So do you know what I mean? It's, it's very interesting. It's not an age related thing. It's how much you're prepared to learn, how much you're prepared to experience and just be as well and where you put society into perspective in relation to your own life. Now, leaving aside, we'd say um, what happened with Pre, you know, previously with the mother and baby homes, mm -hmm. but um, if you can find yourself within that, but I mean, I laugh at them. You know what I mean? I just, but again, with the with the boxes you were talking about going to university, see, it, university can be very good. It can be a very good talking place. It can be very uh, stimulating. But I mean, I've been in, I've been through it recently there, and I mean, I was talking to one of the professors, and he said. I wouldn't let half them in the door. I'd send them out into the world for 10 years. He said, they've no idea what they're doing in here. They said, oh my God, I'm in here. I'm in the university. Oh my God. And he said, they've no idea about life, you know? So um, yeah, it's it's quite interesting. But as I say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in, I'll, I'll be back the next time. So it's just what I had to give. And yeah, I am very interested in all the topics that are coming up because it's all part of the whole. You've got the microcosm with inside yourself. Then you're also part of the universe. And you've also got the control factors going on, which is very evident at the moment, very, very evident. And it's all about disempowering, but you have to empower yourself. And I, I, people say, why do you, I, I watch all the stuff going on, we say the wars and all this kind of COVID. And people say, why? I said, because I'm interested in it, but it doesn't frighten me. Mm -hmm. They don't have power over me. You know, I'm just interested to watch, you know, as an observer. Yeah. But you don't you don't own me. You don't control me. <laughs> and and it's it's easier to do when we're in community, too. So as mm -hmm. much as it is, we have to do it for ourselves. There is no savior coming no. to save us. We have to actually be willing to save ourselves. And yeah. so John Baptiste or John Paul, I wanted to um, you've come into the conversation later. Um, so I apologize for the delay in getting you the, the link. I'm not sure whether you did have an opportunity to hear what we were talking about before you had an opportunity to join in. Um, so welcome. It's great to have you here and uh, I know that uh, you wanted to speak into the uh, Indian Residential Schools Act and your I, I don't know what specifically you wanted to contribute or what you've heard and I I'm aware that everyone um, we, we kind of we leave an hour and a half for these meetings so we have gone longer but I don't want to have you come in and then not give you an opportunity to share a perspective and then to also say we will be coming again back in two weeks so we're just going to set the time for that and hopefully more people can come but please absolutely share your your perspective today welcome. Well, welcome everybody. 
Well, first of all, I, I always want to thank everybody for uh, for being here. Uh, who I am, I am um, I'm Cree. I am from Little Pine First Nations. Uh, it is in Saskatchewan. Okay, so so I was afforded wisdom. Okay, and that's mother. Okay, that the only place you can get wisdom is in nature. Okay, I I was been sharing um, a little uh, bit of. Uh, the wisdom, you know, through you know, through the through the chat that we have, the private chat. Now, now you you touched a lot of things, okay. Now, now what is going on is the unification, right? This is the unification. I don't mean a little bit. Oh no, let's not unify. It's not unify the government. No, no, no. Government's too. Oh, it's it's, it's get that out of here. Now. If you know anything about, you know, energy or whatever you have it, you know, you know that light is is father. Information. Right? We've been demonizing the matrix, right? The the original matrix is mother. Okay. Now, what they showed me is that we we put a, a grid on top of her like this. We infiltrated her. We did. Not 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 the government, not somebody else, read it, because there's no such thing as um, incarnation. You know, there's no such thing as time. So sooner or later, humanity will have to um, apply their knowing, not opinions, right? You know, there's lots of distortion that, that is around. Uh, take for instance, me, you know, I, um, when I woke up, you know, I was distorted, but I had light come into me, right, you know, but for me to totally surrender, right? It takes a lot. It takes a long time because you have to quiet your mind. Mm -hmm. Now, the power that you speak about is the power that we gave to our mental consciousness. That's the power that we have to take back, right? Now, you know, I'm going to butthurt a lot of you guys here because I know that. Don't do not take nothing personal, okay? What I what I see are are patterns and behaviors, okay? is our, you know, you know, be, um, behaviors are not the soul, okay? We love the soul, okay? There's only one heart and one mind here, right? That's mother's, right? The tree of life, there's only one tree, right? There's no, there's no my soul, their soul, no. So as soon as you speak about separation, you're in your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. As soon as you say it, think it, you know, do it. You're in your mind. It's a thought. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know, and I'm not. I'm not discounting the love that's there. That we do at times. Yes, it's. It comes up. It opens up our heart. Okay. It goes. Holy shit. You know, I'm here. I love you so much. Kind of thing. You know that. I'm not discounting that at all. Um. So. So the mind and the heart, right? You know, we are walking through our our Akashic records, right? You know, right from me from here to there, right? You know, that's that that's the matrix, right? That's a box, mm. right? Of the mind, you know, in the mind, that's the only place of uh, pain and suffering is in the mind, right? You know, that's when we are are you know these are templates, you know, the the, the victim the victim is. Um, you know, the shaming, the, the, the distrust, right? You know, if he really knew who who father was or is, I shouldn't say that, kind of clear, constantly delete that, please, is um, he is light, right? So every time you demonize the father, right, with his, with, with his that's information, well, you're demonizing him, right? You have to work with it. You know, you got to work with, work with uh, the government, right? The government's dying, you know, we all know that, mm -hmm. right? You know, the the laws, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to, but again, you know, we, do, we don't know, we, we know what is good and right, right? So we can make laws again, you know, nobody thought about that one, you know, push these laws aside, you know, as, as, a, as a indigenous man, you know, there was lots of uh, disinformation, distortion 
right? And that's why all these people are, you know, when I used to go, when I used to go sit with the others like years ago, you know, the men used to talk about treaties all the time. And I used to go in there, you know, healer, right? I was going there and there'd be, you know, addicts outside walking around, but they yet there was all these men, all they wanted to talk about is our treaties. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was like, like, don't you guys, you know, and you know, I always had a plan of, uh, you know, mother always showed me, you know, make a, make a healing lodge community. Right. You know, we, we always, we always had this, you know, you know, the collective, right. We always see this all the time, but no, no, but it hasn't happened yet. How come? Because nobody fully surrendered. Right. You know, I know what I'm connected to. I'm connected to mother's heart that heart is the is in the center of this earth right you know you ask many of your your gurus uh, what are they connected and right away they'll get uh, butt hurt because they don't know right so this is where i come from i woke up you know uh gained light in 2016 you know after uh, after all my behaviors Right, you know, I have to, you know, unify myself constantly. You know, fractal soul, soul retrieval. Yeah, of course, I, we do that all the time. Because mm -hmm. every night in dream time, we are, we are presented with our akashic records. So we, I mean, I am, I know who I am. You know, I have the, the I hold the the one forty four key geometry. You know, our geometria. Okay. Right. So, I don't know enough about that to be able to speak into that with knowledge. And I'm, I, we don't have well, to. See, you know, see, see, love, see, sister, you're in your mind now. You, if you knew that your soul knows that already, you see the heart, right? Right. You know, that's the thing, you know, you know, we, we, we speak this way, right? You know, the ones, the ones who are, I guess, family, you know, in a, in a essence, we all speak the same way. You know, we all have the same wisdom within, you know? Now, now I just, uh, I just wanted to share a, a little story here, a vision I had. Okay. Um, a few months ago, um, the grandmothers came to me twice, twice, not once, twice. And they showed me, they took me into uh, the records and they showed me every little thing, the horrible thing that happened to me. You know, I was I was abused by my father. You know, all these all these horrible things, abandoned. You know, all that, right? But the grandmothers were there. Mother was there, and they showed me every little detail. You know, all the way to the very end. This, and you know, they they showed me. Said, "You're the one who you're the one who who planned this. You did." Mm -hmm. And they said, they said, they said, and you do deserve every bit of it because I had access to my records. You know, we lived here many millions and millions of years, you know, recycling, going through these loops, you know. It's a loop that we're in. It's a record. These are these are records, right? Once we, once we recognize these patterns, it'll always be that. But we have to get out of that. We have to get out of the mind. Mm -hmm. right? I, know, I know there's lots of resistance here. I can feel it. But at the same time, there's fire, there's um, transmuting going on, okay? So now we're gonna breathe in, right? It's, I have lots of going through me right now. So, so, so with that, okay, with that, with that story I just told you, okay? I've been sharing that with, with you know, other natives groups and, uh, and it's true, you know? Verify anything I say to you, but um, but it is an exciting time. Mm -hmm. It is. You don't get me wrong. You know I don't want to. You know I'll bum everybody out right now. <laughs> no, but I, I just you know I just have to say these little things for now because I'm invited here. You know, and I you know for for me you know I'm a reader. You know I'm a what you call those um, spirit whisperer, mm -hmm. right? And um, no, it's, it is, it is, it has to happen, right? You know, you know, people, you know, people, um, we, 
you know, there's a unification, right? You know, later on, you, everybody will see it. It's a unification. Mm -hmm. Now, what's what's playing out here, right? That's a mirror. Okay, everything of your distrust, right? Are you are you you know being victim? These are templates, right? So instead of you know trapping ourselves here, you know, giving us the AI that gives us false emotions here, mm -hmm. right? it does, mm -hmm. you know. And when we see this, it's not very nice. When we really see yourself, who you are, it's not nice at all. Because spirit will show you, spirit will show you, okay. But then, what we do, you know, we go, you know, we talk out loud to ourselves, you know, comfort each other, you know, you know, gather, mm -hmm. right? You know, these are, you know, when we gather, healing occurs mm -hmm. automatically. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But um, it's um, um, am I healed? No, of course not. You know, as soon as somebody says um, they're healed, well, that just tells me that they're not. They wouldn't have you know, a reason to continue being here in well, the human incarnation if all healing was done. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, um, well, we, we planned this a long time ago, right? You know, what I, uh, I am a follower of, uh, of Sophia, right? Crystal Sophia. This is the, the Sophia uprising. Right, we how we we lost we 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 dropped in consciousness. Right, morality, we dropped morality. Okay, morality and consciousness go hand in hand. Frequency go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know I cannot say I'm all this guy. You know I'm this, but tomorrow or, or tonight I, I'm going to drink a you know a forty a forty pounder of, of vodka. Doesn't work that way. No, right. You know, to fully know thyself, it takes a lot. It does. Of course. So I just want to say, you know, thank everybody. And um, who, who I speak to is mother all the time. Right. You know, she's the, the queen of heaven. You know, she's Gaia. You know, she has a lot of aspects. She's um, Yeshua. She's Buddha. She's all, she was all of them. She's me and you. You know, we are, we are becoming the land, right? So we can feel, you know, feel, you know, not, you know, not in here, right? You know, right? And, and we're building upon, he says, because this, our, our, our society is built on uh, the material, okay? You know, we, you know, the mind is the, from the 12 dimensions, right? Material dimensions. And now, however, though, now we are making the foundation of, of spirit, okay? Before it was, you know, if you think about it, before it was, you know, uh, family first, you know, job first, then, you know, your, your children, um, then your spouse, and then you, right? You know, it was, it was backwards, right? You know, it was backwards, right? But now it's, you know, it's, you know, it was uh, now it's it's you, right? Without without spirit, you're you're lost. You know the Hopi prophecy says this, right? And then it's your partner and your children, right? Then your family, right? Then community, right? See, and we build upon these, mm -hmm. you know. But now all this distortion is here. Okay, it was always here. Just that we are gaining consciousness, we are actually seeing it. You know, walking through it now. You will. But yeah, there's um, lots to talk about, to discuss. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Well, and we'll come. We'll we'll wrap up for today. But when you said material, in my mind, I saw, I I, I see now material as matter. I all. It's like that just kind of made sense in my mind. We're putting it together. It's and and mater is earth which is heart spelled in a different way and edwin over on facebook um was talking about the akashic records in relation to what you were saying um you can't get there without love going through the heart chakra and i well you have to you have to walk you have to walk through it you know don't forget too it's 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 all you know it's all distorted light dark it's all distorted because we live here 
That was the fall. That's our, yeah, that's, that's our, yeah. And we're getting here, right? Yeah. We are walking through and we're, you know, we're getting here, you yeah. know, the unification and always not just a little bit, yeah. you know, the mind will, will trick you that way. So we have to really observe, you know, the mind. The eight, the greatest 18 inch gap we can ever maneuver is from the head into the heart back where we started and to know it for the first time, because we didn't have eyes before we aligned ourselves with our heart. And as one who's trained in accessing the Akashic records as a soul realignment practitioner years ago, it's like in order to access them, it's going into the heart and that's where you find the records and anyone that is unfamiliar with the term Akashic records, those are essentially the energetic database that contain the record of all souls of all time. And so you can actually go in and find your book within the records. And then you can find information about your soul specifically within the library of us, because we are all one until we take the love out and feel alone. So uh, on that note, I'm going to say it's been two amazing hours and I sincerely appreciate each of you for showing up in the way that you did. It was brilliant. I appreciate each of you and your contributions. And I look forward to coming together again in uh, two weeks and hope you can each join. I will be sharing this to face or into uh, YouTube. I'll post the recording. So if you can share the message and if you go back and you take some notes i'd appreciate the insights that came up for you from this and whether it's a thought or whether it's a feeling um, please be mindful of both because they are not the same the subconscious is the feeling center and the head is the thinking center so feel through and think through what this meant to and for you and then let's come together again in two weeks and unpack some more excellent beautiful Thank you, everyone.